Here I am, she said, twisting the raffia angels and winding the ribbon around the pop puris, etching her gift cards. Here I am, living my own life and making my own decisions. Şimdi burada da artık ben bir işime gücüne vermiş bir şekilde e, kendisi düşüncelere giriyor ve kendi kararlarını kendisini de verebileceği bir yaşamın doğrultusunda söylemeye çalışıyor. She wanted to invite someone down to stay, someone young, so that she could be seen and approved of, but there was no one. A search through all the drawers and cup cupboards at the bungalow didn't yield her the address of the niece Angela. She would have sent a little note with a Christmas gift to tell of her removal, prove her independence. Miss Rose Common returned from Italy looked rather tired and not very sun-tanned. She came in with a miniature plaster copy of a Donatello statue and some fine art postcards. Miss Bartlett made tea and the conversation was very stilted. Biraz gergin şekilde geçiyor. You are not warm enough here, said Mr. Common. I will send down some extra blankets. Oh no, thank you. Please don't do that. But the following day, the blankets and a Dutch apple pie arrived with the butcher's boy. Miss Bartlett bought a huge slabs of cheese and eggs, which she could boil quite well, and many potatoes, and ate them off her knee, knee while she read detective stories through the long evenings. She thought that she might buy a television set for company, though she was busy too with the postal orders for Christmas. When all this over, she told herself, that is when I shall start looking about me and making my plans. She thought of all the things she might have done as a girl, the studio in London and the woodblock engravings for the poetry press, the ballet company for whom she might have been asked to do some ethereal costume designs. She read in a newspaper of a woman who had started her own firm speciali specializing in computer management at the age of 50 and was now rather wealthy, wholly respected in a man's world. Miss Bartlett looked at herself in the mirror. I am only 47, she said. In her white bungalow, Lonely and lacking a sense of purpose, Miss Roscommon waited. On November the 7th, the first of the storms came and Miss Bartlett sat in her back room and heard the wind and the crashing of the sea terrified. The next morning she saw that part of the pyre head had broken away. Iskelenin bakın başı da gitmiş dalgalardan. Miss Ross Common sent down a note with a meat pastry, pastry via the butcher's boy. I am worried about you, she wrote. You cannot be looking after yourself, and I know that is damp in that cottage. Your room here is ready for you at any time. Miss Bartlett tore the note up and threw the pastry away, but she thought of the warm bed, the fires and soft sofas, at Tuscany. Two days later, when the gales began again, Miss Rose Common came herself and hammered at the door of the cottage. But Miss Bartlett hid upstairs, behind a cheval mirror, until she went away. This time there was no note, only a thermos flask of lentil soup on the doorstep. She suffers a Suffocating me, thought Miss Bartlett. I cannot bear all these unwanted attentions. I only wish to be left alone. It is a poor thing if a woman of her age and resources can find nothing else to occupy her, nothing else to live for. Burada da artık karar vermeler dikkatini çeker. But in spite of herself, she drank the soup and the taste of it. The smell of the steam rising up into her face reminded her of all the news at Tuscany. The winter evening spent happily sitting beside them, 
pyre. When the storms came again, another section of the pyre broke away. The lifeboat put out to sea and sank with all hands, and the front room of Miss Butler's cottage was flooded. Rain broke in through a rent in the roof. She lay all night, too terrified by the roaring of the wind and seas to get out of bed and do anything about it, only whimpering a little with cold and fright, remembering how close the cottage came to the water, how vulnerable she was. As a child, she had been afraid of all storms, gales and thunder and cloud bursts, drumming on the roof, and her mother had understood, wrapped her in a blanket and taken her into her own bed. It is because you have such a vivid imagination, she had said. You feel things that other, ordinary little children cannot even ever feel. And so nothing had been done to conquer the praiseworthy fear of storms. Now I am alone, thought Miss Bartley. There is no one, my mother is dead, and who is there to shelter and understand me? A flare rocket sent up from the sinking lifeboat lit up the room faintly for a second, and then she knew who there was, and that everything would be all right. On the stormy nights, Miss Roscommon always got up and made sandwiches and milky hot drinks, brought them to her as she lay awake in bed, and they would sit reading nice magazines in the gentle circle of the bedside lamp. I had been very foolish, Miss Bartlett thought, and heard herself saying it aloud, humbly to Miss Roscommon. A very foolish, selfish woman. I do not deserve to have you as a friend. Yanlış anlamalar da var tabi bayanın maddi açısından Miss Roscommon. She didn't take very much with her up the hill on the following morning. Only a little hand case and some raffia work. The rest could follow later, and it would be better to arrive like that. It would be a real indication of her helplessness. The landscape was washed very clean and bare and pale, but the sea churned and moved within itself. Angry and battleship grey. Ne güzel tasvir bakın, manzara. In the summer, Miss Bartley thought, refreshed again by the short walk, it will be time to think again. For I am not committing myself to any permanent arrangements and things will have to be rather different now. I will not allow myself to be treated as a pet plaything that must be understood. For she had forgotten in the cold clear morning the terrors of the previous night. She wondered what to do. Ring the bell or knock or simply open the door into the kitchen where Miss Roscommon would be working and stand there, case in hand, waiting to be forgiven. Her heart beat a little faster. Tuscany was very settled and reassuring in its low, four-square whiteness on top of the hill. Miss Bartlett knocked timidly at the blue kitchen door. It was some time before she gave up knocking and ringing and simply went in. Tuscany was very quiet. She found her in the living room lying crumpled awkwardly on the floor, one of her legs twisted underneath her. Her face was curious, flat color, like the inside of a raw potato. Miss Bartlett drew back the curtains. The clock had stopped just before midnight, almost twelve hours ago. For a moment she stood there, still holding her little case in the comfortable chintzy room and then she dropped down onto her knees and took the head of Miss Roscommon into her lap and rocking and rocking, cradling it like a child. Miss Bartlett wept. Şimdi e, eser bu şekilde bitiyor. Konunun başında da söylediğim gibi derslerimi takip edenler de var, etmeyenler de var. Artık ben karışmıyorum. Etmeyenlere bir şeyler demiyorum. Edenler için de görüyorum çünkü sayılar belli oluyor kaç kişinin takip ettiği dersleri zaman zaman. Acaba size göre tekrar ediyorum. 
Bartley'de, Bayan Bartlett'te pişmanlık duygusu oluşuyor mu? Çünkü Bayan Roscommon'un başını tuttuğu zaman sağa sola böyle sallamaya başlıyor. Ve ondan sonra ağlamaya başlıyor. Çünkü Bayan Roscommon'un 12 saat önce neredeyse öldüğü anlaşılıyor. Bu konuda bir şeyler istiyorum sizden. Eğer tabii yazan olursa ne ala. Diğer taraftan da sorularımız var. Mesela bunlar içerisinde birinci sorumuz çok önemli bizim için. Birinci kısımdakiler. Bayan Roscommon'la Miss Bartlett arasındaki farklılıkları bulmanızı istiyorum sizlerden. Bunu da tabii mesajlardan gönderin bakmalıklar. Diğer taraftan bu e, compare and contrast diyebileceğimiz iki tane kelime var. Bunlar sizin eğitim, öğretim yıllarınız içerisinde çok önem arz edecek iki kelime. Zıttıklar var mı? Mukayese etme durumları var mı? Dolayısıyla e, birinci ve ikinci sorulara da cevap vermenizi tavsiye ediyorum. Bunları da göndermeye çalışın. E, İkinci bölümde de daha ziyade bu genç insanların yani Angela ve yeni evlendiği eşinin acaba bir rolü var mı Bayan Bartlett üzerinde? Bunları bir düşünmeye çalışın. Daha ziyade Bartlett üzerinde gidecek. E, bu haftaki konumuz bu kadar. Şimdi bir de yarın e, sizlerle birlikte bir telafi yapacağız. Bunu daha önceden belirtmiştim. Hatırlarsınız. Yarınki dersimizin e, videolarını da gene koyacağım. Burada da Bayan Biril olarak e, bir konumuz geçiyor. Bunu e, yapacağız. Son olarak da gelecek hafta tabii kitap bitmiş oluyor. Bu konuda da ben e, bir şeyler bulmaya çalışacağım. Bakalım e, varsa elimde. Kısa öykülerden bir tanesini de bulacağım. Bunu da e, ekleme yaparım EDS üzerinden. Dolayısıyla ee, bir kitabı hiç olmazsa bu şekliyle videolar vasıtasıyla bitirmiş oluyoruz sizlerle. Evet, yarın tekrar buluşmak üzere sizlerle hoşça kalın derken kendinize dikkat edin, derslerinize dört elle sarılın. Bakarsınız hep tekrar ediyorum, üniversiteler tekrar açılır çocuklar ve birlikte gene yüz yüze sizlerle birlikte oluruz, ee, sınavlarınızı yaparız. Evet, esenlikler diliyorum, hoşça kalın.